Hello, my uh, Maple Leaf fans. Welcome to a very quick edition of uh, Maple Leaf Press Conference for Sunday, December 3rd. I'm going to take you live to a quick press conference before Thursday's game against Ottawa. Anyway. Yeah, I think uh, we played well. I think we, we deserved um, to tie that game at the end, and um, you know, I'm glad we did. But, uh, you know, obviously an unfortunate result there. But, uh, you know, I think we battled back pretty hard and um, just did really well. We're a couple months into the season now. What has been your experience getting to know Joe Wall more on a personal Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Um, fun to be around. Um, obviously he's a goalie, so he's a little bit different than other players. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's super... Uh, super excited to have him. He's, you know, he stepped up every time he's uh, he's been called. Here and um, yeah, so I think uh, he's been doing really well for us, and he's a he's a big part to why we're doing so well. When it comes to skill on the ice, like, how does that change maybe the offensive mindset of the team, knowing just how solid he is? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it changes their game a lot. We obviously want to support them as much as possible, but yeah, it's it's nice to have them there. To it's a little bit of comfort, you know. Um, we have a lot of confidence in him that he's going to make those plays and those stops that, uh, um, you know, he can keep us in games and, and keep it tight. But uh, I don't think it changes on our end. I think we still have to um, support him as much as possible and, and play defense well. You know, I think uh, uh, he's he's been bailing us out, but I think we have to help him out. Yeah, it takes a lot. Um, you know, it takes a lot mentally and physically. You know, it's uh, it's a it's a daily process. You know, every day uh, you got to take care of yourself, uh, making sure your body's uh, prepared and ready for the next game because you know you play so often. And um, so that that was kind of the adjustment for me from college. So I, um, you know, the preparedness you have to have um, on a daily basis is is a, is a big jump. But uh, you know, I think with the resources here and the staff here, it's it's been really easy and. Um, you know, following a bunch of the uh, veterans' footsteps, it's it's been uh, it's been wonderful for me. 
got to know him too. You guys are locker partners, you know, neighbors, and some chats on the bench too. Why do you feel like a player like him can be really beneficial to new guys or younger players? Well, for sure. I mean, he's a loud, uh, loud player, you know, and that's a that's a good thing. We needed it. We needed that voice in the locker room and. Um, super talkative, super welcoming. You know, I think he was, um, you know, one of the new guys that came up to me early and, and just introduced himself. And um, you know, I just, I think guys just like to be around him. You know, I think he, he brings a good presence in the locker room and, and also on the bench. You know, so I think he's a he's a, a very valuable attribute to this team. Nick, that game against Boston, is it the exact type of game you guys expected coming into it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, they're an elite team, and so are we. So we knew we were going to get their best and our best, and. Uh, it was a very competitive game. I thought it could go either way, and unfortunately we got the loss there, but it was a great game. What's your reaction when you see Domi score such a huge goal like that? Oh, it was great. I mean, I know he's been he's been eyeing for one, and for him to get one, uh, hopefully he gets on a roll here. It's good to, good to see him put one in the back of the net. You've been up with the Leafs now for a while. What have you learned about Matthew Nyes and the type of person he is? Nothing. <laughs> no, he's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I knew he was Slo I didn't know he was Slovakian, but uh, no, he's a great guy, great player, all that stuff. I'll keep it short because he's right behind me, but great player, great guy, and it's good to have another young guy or be around another young guy to kind of be around with, so it's nice. I know you've spoken about how nice it is to stay on the same line for a while. Yeah. What do you feel has been working well for the three of you? Um, I just think we're playing fast. I think being consistent with our speed and what we're, our strengths are, and um, I'm fortunate to be on the same line and be in the lineup uh, as consistently as we are. So um, we just want to keep it rolling from there. You've seen Joe Wall play at the AHL level and NHL level now. How has he developed from your perspective? Great. I think he's very poised and very calm as a goalie. I think, uh, you know, he's been an NHL goalie for a couple of years. I've, I've seen how really good he is, and now people are seeing it even more. So he's a great goalie for us, and I'm happy to see him have success. When it comes to goalies over your career, even in junior and stuff like that, like where does he rank in terms of, like, Preparation. Oh, he's he's top. Like, uh, I mean, when you're in junior, you don't really know as much. But I mean, obviously now and um, what he's gone through, I'm sure he has a great routine, and he's just very focused and knows what to do to get himself dialed in. And no moment's too big for him. Whether the score is, what whatever the score is, he's always there for us. He's he's a great goaltender. Are you about as comfortable in your role with this team as you have ever been at this point? Yeah, 100. percent I mean, I, I know that I'm kind of slotted in there with, with Domes and Yarny. And I want to keep it that way and do my best to every day earn it to be there with them and be consistent. So I'm comfortable with where my game's at and, and what the team needs out of me. And that's playing with my speed, using my shot when I need to, and just getting getting a lot of energy out of us. So um, And also a line that can produce, too, in the back end. So uh, I'm very happy with it. So even mentally, Nick, just to get through all this, and not going to hurt, not going to work, but, you know, so, you know, the, yeah, well, the, but, you know the injuries have, have, have taken the toll, but uh, yeah. here you are, you're giving us a good run. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I think uh, I think being consistent, consistently in the lineup is, is helps that. Mm -hmm. It just kind of gets your flow and rhythm, and you kind of just, you don't overthink things, and you kind of can just kind of slow the game down because you're in the lineup, you have chemistry, alignments kind of thing. But, um, you know, I think those are just flukes and kind of, just move on. Obviously, um, do everything they can to, to play well, and obviously pick and choose like also to what battles to go into and, and little things to protect myself as well. On the goal last night, like for, to us, it looks like it develops quickly, but you have a good idea that Max is there. Is call for that puck? What yeah, yeah, I knew that. I was slashing pretty hard, and I knew that Domes was coming up in the play too because you're only kind of filled in lower there. Yeah, so uh, I knew he was there. I was calling for it, so it was just an easy pass over. Sheldon? How happy have you been with the third line? I know I talked to Robertson, and he said he's really loving the fact that you're keeping them together. What are you liking from them? They've, they've scored us uh, some uh, very important goals, of course, last night uh, being the most recent. Uh, they have the ability, uh, you know, to break free and, and create offense like they have there. Um, since we've moved Domi to center, like it, it's really – sort of snap some things in a positive direction for our team in terms of being able to control play better. Uh, it, it's been you know, a little more up and down of late, quite frankly, but still like some of those elements and how, and how it works. And, and uh, you know, uh, it's a big moment in the game last night, so to see those guys come through is, is really important. Is one of the differences in Nick, do you think, Sheldon, this time around, that he's not forcing things and just kind of letting what he does well dictate what he does, or how do you see that? Yeah, I'd say so. I think he's there's a there's a uh, there's growth there. There's maturity in his game. I think you know you come in as a young player, especially a guy that's used to filling the net consistently. 
you know, you'll learn over time that it's a difficult thing to do in the NHL. So if, if, if you're not going to be able to make the impact that uh, you're accustomed to offensively, so then it becomes a question of, okay, how can I impact the game or, or manage the game when I'm out there? And it's not just, I think it's all our players. I mean, uh, Austin Matthews right near the top of the league in goals, but you're not scoring a goal every game. You're not scoring, certainly not scoring a goal every shift. So you got a lot of, a lot of time in between there where you've got to manage the game. I think that is for young players, uh, for a lot of young players, that is the, the biggest area where they need to grow. You know, and that's through their maturity, their time in the American League, all that. That's really what it's about. And um, I think the injuries have sort of naturally slowed uh, Nick down a bit in terms of his development. But uh, also, I think you've just allowed him to mature a little more and you know, gain some greater perspective about how he can fit in within a roster. Tyler Bertuzzi was telling me that it probably took him longer to adjust to this team and his teammates and, and all that goes with it longer than he wanted it to, but he feels like he's there now. Do you see him, uh, you've always talked about him going to be a big role here, but where do you see his, the growth of his team with his game within this team? Yeah, I think he's been really good for a long time here now. Um, you know, I, th I thought last night was maybe the most competitive. I've seen him on the puck and, you know, uh, just had a heavy stick and creating turnovers. Uh, I liked a lot about his game last night, but it's it's been trending in such a good direction for a long time now. So I think uh, he's he's in a really good place, it, you know. Um, and yeah, it, it it took longer uh, than probably any of us would have liked, and, and certainly for him coming in, you know, you want to impress and you want to do well early. But yeah, I think I said it a couple of times now. It, 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 Felt like it was just going to be something to take time because he is a very good player uh, in the league. But uh, I, I've really been happy with this with this play here. Obviously, got some attention a couple of games ago, or whatever it was, you know, for for one mistake on the ice. But that's it, it was interesting how that worked out because I was chatting with him just the day before that game where he made that mistake to tell him how how great I thought he was playing and how happy I, we've been with him. Um, and uh, you know, one mistake doesn't take away from that. He's he's found a real nice groove here, and he's moving his feet, and he's way more involved. And I'm going to guess that you probably didn't know a great deal about Noah Gregor before he got here, but how much have you come to trust his game? Yeah, uh, I lots, you know. Um, and, you know, I go into each game here now thinking about how I can get him more involved, and and that's, that's something now that he's earned that, and I've talked to him about that. Uh, hasn't always worked out in terms of the the minutes and all of that, but it, you know even last night there was a couple times I had him called up in different situations and the circumstances change for the a face off or a TV timeout or something and, and it doesn't come to fruition. But but uh, he's he's inching towards you know getting more responsibility there, um, and you know he and Camp have done a good job for us. I think uh, by and large. Um, in playing against good players when they need them to. And then uh, he's done really well in the penalty kill as well. And as we've used him more, our penalty kill has gotten better. Uh, so there's lots of really good signs there. And I think that, uh, you know, he's, he's deserving of more opportunity. And I think that opportunity will come, whether that's just through utilizing uh, all four lines more or he's going to push the others that are playing ahead of him to take some of their minutes away. What is it like taking a guy who yeah, it's. Um, I think first of all, it's identifying the traits that you think might might make him a good penalty killer. So you have reason to believe that he can help you. Uh, in Gregor's case, he obviously has great speed. I think he's got good anticipation as well. Uh, he came from a place in San Jose that had been one of the top penalty killing teams in the league. So uh, he was sort of at the you know, at the bottom of a of a group of guys that were, were, would penalty kill, uh, he wouldn't get a lot of minutes in games. But he had said, you know, he, as it usually works out, you, know, you become uh, a regular penalty killer in practice. So he had enough reps there. Um, and then it's just spending time, spending time with it. And, and Dean Chanel's done a good job of working with the, the penalty killers individually, with between uh, Gregor and Matthews and Nylander and Nyes. You know, you've got four guys there that we've used in the penalty kill that haven't really penalty killed regularly in the NHL. So it's taken time for that to come together, and we've been really happy with it. But uh, I think it first comes with showing some belief in the player. Um, and 
you referenced Kerfoot. You know, he, he became a really valuable penalty killer for us and at the time hadn't done much of it. And uh, we see similar similar traits in, in uh, Gregor for sure. Lagerson today? Uh, Just illness. It seems to be kind of it's that time of the year and is uh, making its way through the room, so we're going to have to manage that. Same for Samson. Obviously. Samson off as well, same thing. He just wasn't still not feeling up to it. And the way our schedule is, it was easy to give him another day today. The chatter around the team always seems to be they need more defense, the injuries, the uh, need depth. But you seem quite comfortable with the three guys that are filling in or the two guys if Connor's a regular. The guys have done a good job. Yeah, they, they really have. Um, you know, the Flaggison and, and Benoit, uh, even before Timmins came back in, before he was healthy, uh, those guys did a good job. They're managing the game well when they're out there, and we've seen growth in their game uh, offensively, too, because we do need that. We need, we, like when I say offensive, I'm talking more about breaking the puck out and helping us get out of our zone. Uh, we think that that's the next area where they can continue to grow. But uh, defensively, those guys have battled. They've gotten in the way. They've got good instincts. They're good sticks. They're you know, you know, two of our biggest defensemen in terms of height and length. Uh, so they've, they've added some different elements there that uh, have, been, have been welcome. And uh, credit to them for stepping in at a time. You know, we've, we've had to ask lots of minutes of them here, especially of late, and, and been really happy with them. It's, it's, it's often difficult to find mistakes uh, defensively with them. And, and if there are mistakes, it's certainly not related to effort or competitiveness because those guys are, are really uh, giving us everything that they have. Is there a balance for you at all this week, Sean, with the, the, uh, the, um, the difference in the schedule? You have three practice days and four, and the guys are used to playing every other night. But so how does it affect the coaching staff? What do you want to do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's rare. I, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, the trip to Sweden was some, some unique circumstances that I've never experienced in the league. Uh, in in of itself, this is different. There's no travel related, and we're just here and, and waiting to, to to get to Ottawa on Wednesday for a Thursday game. Uh, I don't know that I've ever had a stretch like this in the NHL. Uh, maybe once or twice, I guess, but uh, nothing really stands out. So we've got to manage it well, and we we chose to get out and skate today and, and work at some things that we thought needed some attention and, and then take tomorrow off, which helps break up the, the week a little bit. Uh, I do think that's important. I think there is something to be said where you can practice too much, um, where the, the players get a little bit uh, fatigued in, in their own right with practices and meetings and such. Um, but there was something nice about going every other day this week, you know, you're kind of getting into that rhythm a little bit, and before long, um, we're probably going to be playing too many games, and, and that's just kind of the way the NHL works. But we have to maximize this week for sure, and make sure that we we tighten our game up and use it for that way. We, we took good steps last night. I felt uh, liked what we got done in practice today, and then you know Tuesday and Wednesday are important practices to set us up for for the. You know, busy stretch that's coming. Any timeline on uh, Timothy Lilligan's return? I'm skating out there again today. Uh, no, no set timeline other than to say they're they're really happy with how he's progressed and he's felt good uh, on the ice and he's been able to do a lot more in the early going here than they even perhaps uh, anticipated. So um, that's very encouraging. But there's no, I haven't even been told uh, to expect him in practice or anything at any time in the near future here yet. But. Uh, he is he is progressing well. I watched him a little bit out there today, and, and looks like he's digging in well and stopping and starting. And, um, you know, I, he's experienced this before. Uh, when I had him with the Marlies, he went through high ankle sprain, and he's told me this one doesn't feel nearly as bad as that one uh, coming back. So that's that's encouraging, and we're hopeful that we can get him back in the mix here sooner than later. Is there usually a telltale sign for you with Austin when he's going? Yeah, skating and, and just attacking, um, attacking, and you know, we, you know, I've had this conversation about about him, you know, being more assertive in shooting the puck. Um, I think that's a that's a big piece of of who he is and, and what he can do for our team. Um, it's not just because of the goals that come from it, but I think there's a lot of chaos and randomness and things that can occur when he shoots the puck because it it creates a little bit of panic on the opposition um, and. And uh, they can leave their positioning and it affects their ability to cover other people or on the retrievals and such uh, to get the next puck. Um, so that's a big part of it for me, uh, is just to make sure he continues to have that, that mindset. Does he get maybe too choosy at times? Like try to find the perfect Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, recently there's been some examples to me where he's looked, he's deferred. Uh, 
defer to others and trying to make plays. And there, there's plays available that you see that are there, but um, there's certain players on your team that you would rather they are more focused on the net and attacking and taking on the defender or taking on the goaltender, and then the play can come off of whatever happens after that uh, rather than um, looking for something else. I think Austin, without a doubt, is one of those players that you, you want to, to uh, be assertive in that way. And generally as a team, that's one of the things we've been talking a lot about is, is not overpassing the puck and, and just challenge the goaltender, make him make a save, and let's be good with whatever happens next. And, and I think that's an area we've tried to improve in as a team. And when it's not going well, it's usually because we've gotten away from that.